signature entry <laughs> what's up everybody uh this is uh not so burned in here and um i hope this video finds you having a good day or i hope that you've already had a good day depending on the time of day where you at right now so uh today i'm gonna be talking about a whole bunch of gadgets that i own why am i doing this well i'm I am operating under the assumption that you could be me, but five years ago, five years ago, I knew very little about phones. I knew very little about computers. I knew very little about Bluetooth speakers and basically everything else here. So um, I'll be right back shortly after the signature entry video of mine. Stay tuned. <laughs> Right now, I don't want to waste any time at all. I'm going to jump straight into the very first thing that I wanted to talk about today. Now, first things first, when it comes to a phone, I need you to kill brand loyalty. What do I mean by that? The same phone from the same company for the five past years. Companies like uh, Techno, Itel, Infinix, Huawei, a few versions of the Huawei, uh, ZTE. If these are the companies that are prevalent among the vendors that sell phones back where you're from, I want you to put them to the side and I want to introduce new companies to you that you might not have heard of, especially if you are in and around East and Southern Africa. Those of you that are on the West part of Africa, you might have heard of these phones. Company number one would be Samsung. Company number two would be Vivo. Company number three would be Oppo. Company number four would be Xiaomi, the Redmi and the Lot version. And then company number five would be OnePlus. These are the different brand of phones that I want you to consider if you are going to get a new phone or upgrade from what you already have. Now, let's move on to the features. The Samsung Galaxy M31. Now, this particular video is a video that I am aiming at the motherland, Africa. If you are anything like me, but five years ago, the only thing that I considered when trying to buy a phone back in the day were how many megapixels were on the camera, labeled on the camera. And the other thing would be... Yeah, that was pretty much it. It was megapixels and probably something like uh, whether or not the particular phone was the latest in, li in line of the products being released by a particular company. And that was pretty much it. Well, I don't want that to be you. I want you to be able to identify a couple of other features that might be helpful to you in buying your next gadget. First thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to these phones is the RAM random access memory without getting too technical ram is the number of tasks that your phone can perform at a given time this is helpful when it comes to operating more than one tab at once you can have your facebook instagram snapchat you can have more than five apps opened at once and you can seamlessly switch through different apps from different windows without losing data from the previous app that you were into. Now, let's say I was checking out somebody's picture on Facebook and I switched to Instagram and looked at somebody else's picture. If I was to go back to Facebook on a phone that had lower RAM, that page would be refreshed and I would have to look for that person afresh to get them. That does not happen to a phone that has higher RAM. And if in 2021, if you're gonna get a phone, make sure it has at least four gigs of RAM or higher. It is unacceptable to buy anything lower than four gigs. You will most likely regret that after six months. So no, don't do that. Second thing that I wanna talk about would be the processor. Now look, let me keep it short. If you're going to buy a phone, when it comes to the processor, you need to look at two. The first processor would be the Exynos line of processors when it comes to Samsung phones. Anything higher than an Exynos 9611, you're good to go. 
And the other type of processor that you need to be looking into would be Snapdragon. Now, Snapdragon is a bit better than the processor, than the Exynos, sorry. Especially if you get the uh, higher end versions of the processors. Exynos and Snapdragon, that's number two. And the third thing that you need to consider when you are buying a phone is the type of screen technology that's being used. What you need to be looking into is a screen that has AMOLED technology. This is the latest inline technology when it comes to screen displays. The fourth thing would be the camera features. Anything higher than 20 megapixels is a yes, yes. And uh, your camera sensors could either come from Sony, they may come from OmniVision or Samsung. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And all these features is something that you could uh, identify on the website of the particular company that you are interested in and the particular model. Or if not, well, if you happen to be at a shop, just ask for the um, brochures of the phone. You will find a readout of all these features. And then last but not least would be the uh, battery capacity of the phones. The battery capacity should be anything higher than 4,000 milliampere. Anything lower than that, your phone might not last a day. One of these should at least last about eight hours in today's day and age. 2021, your phone battery has to last at least eight hours with heavy usage, that is. So yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to phones. If I sum it all up uh, quickly, that's the, um, the RAM in the phone, the camera sensors, you've got the screen technology and the battery. These are the four features that I want you to be able to identify in the phone if you're looking to upgrade one of these. The next gadget that I wanna talk about is a portable computer or a laptop. And I happen to own an Asus VivoBook E15. Um, one of the main things that you need to look at when buying a computer, well, it uh, most likely, it, it depends on what you intend to use it for. If you are not somebody that is into content creating, you know, editing videos, editing pictures, or using apps that require heavy processing power, well, let me just keep it short. An engineering student, that is probably going to deal with uh, softwares like um, ANSYS, AutoCAD, um, Sketchbook, or any one of those apps that are from the uh, Autodesk lineup. You, what you need to do is buy a laptop that has a dedicated graphics card. One of these babies here, NVIDIA. Your dedicated uh, gra graphics card has to be two gigs or higher but two gigs should be more than sufficient enough for any tasks that you might give the computer. The dedicated graphics card in on its own is not enough. Something else is gonna have to back that up for you to get the best performance out of a computer or rather laptop. And that would be an SSD drive. Now an SSD drive is basically a solid state drive, which is a new technology, an upgrade from the HDD those are the hard disk drive. Lastly, would be the processor. As of 2021, all I can say is your computer needs at least a core i5 or higher. Whatever core of the processor that you buy, be it a core i3, though I don't recommend that today, especially as an engineering student or anybody that's gonna be dealing in photo editing, video editing, content creating, whatever. If you, uh, you need to get a Core i5 or higher and of the 10th generation. This, this computer here in particular is the Core i5 8th gen. I, nothing wrong with this computer, it performs just fine, but if you were to buy it, a computer right now, after watching this video, get a Core i5 10th gen or Core i7, from then on, you're good. As far as computers are concerned, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Let's move on to the next gadget. And the 
next gadget would be one of these babies here. Now, this is an action camera. For those of you that don't know what an action camera is, well, yeah, it's an action camera. It's, an, it's a camera used to record fast action, you know, like, in one of my pretty uh in one of my previous videos where i am riding a bicycle and i am recording the view ahead yeah well i used one of these this is the dgi osmo action from the dgi company the company that is most well known for making drones this is the one of the cheapest uh action cameras that you could find out there other than this most people would recommend that you get a gopro which is top of the line when it comes to making action cameras. But GoPros tend to be really expensive. Instead of that, go for one of these right here. There's really not much that I can, that I should be telling you about this. As far as the features are concerned, uh, it has everything you need, more than enough. Shoots all the way up to 4K. That's pretty much it. Let's jump on to the next gadget. This is a graphics tablet. I've made uh, a video on this, though it's one of my earliest videos where shooting and editing wasn't really all that good. But anyway, so a graphics tablet is a tablet that allows you to draw on computer. If you want to upgrade from paper to digital art, you're going to need one of these babies right here. This is the XP Pen Deco Pro small version. There are three main companies that you need to look into. The first company at the top of the line is Wacom. Com. Second in line is Huion. Third in line, in my opinion, would be XP Pen. This is one of the cheapest that you can find. Currently, you can get one of these for $100 or less. Here in India, this sells for about $7,000. 800 which is about 110 dollars the features that you need to be looking into is that um the drawing area should be at least nine by five inches the other thing that you should know is that uh the pen pressure on one of these should at least be 8192 levels of pen pressure 8192 is the minimum levels of pen pressure that should be available in the pen that comes with one of these here. Other than that, well, there are a whole bunch of applications that you can use this for. Like I said, digital art, you can also use it in the sector of uh, civil engineering and the lot. And I'm going to be linking the uh, websites to all of the gadgets that I'm talking about so that if you are interested, you can get more information on one of these if you'd like. On to the next gadget and that would be a Bluetooth speaker. I happen to own a Boat Stone 1200. The first feature that you need to consider is the Bluetooth version. The version of Bluetooth has to be four and higher, four or five. The four covers a range of about 30 meters. And then the Bluetooth five version covers a range of over 120 meters. That's one thing that you need to know. Choose between version four or version five of uh, Bluetooth. Anything lower than that is a no-no when it comes to for 2021. The other thing that you should consider is the multi-room feature. A Bluetooth speaker that is multi-room enabled means that it has the ability to connect to more than one speaker at a time. And well, you can already see how this is useful. There are times when you want more sound output or when you want uh, a particular song to be playing in more than one room. And so when, when a speaker has multi-room enabled, you can connect it to more than one speaker and that just basically gives you that stereo sound experience in open space. And then the other thing that you should be considering when you are purchasing one of these, it has to have more than one sound output channel, meaning underneath this cover right here is two sound speakers and one bass bar. One speaker for the bass and two for sound. You do not want to have a speaker that only has one channel that does everything, both the bass and the sound. The sound quality will not be as good as a speaker that has two sound channels, one for bass and two for sound. Other than that, I would tell you to look out for brands like JBL, brands like uh, Bose, brands like Bolt, Harman, and then there is this particular one here, Bolt, that is made in India. That's pretty much all that I 
it's pretty much all that I have to say when it comes to Bluetooth um, speakers. And as a bonus, I would like to add um, a charger head for phones. Now, this is not particularly a gadget because I don't know. Well, it could be a gadget. I don't know. I'm going to have to look up the definition of that. But um, here's the, uh, the only thing that I want to share with you when it comes to one of these is that you should not interchange these charger heads when you want to charge your phone. Just because uh, your friend has a phone that is also USB, USB-C compatible does not mean that you just get to pick up their charger and plug it into your phone. Mm -mm. The labeling here has to be exactly identical as with your original charger head. The output voltage has to be the same. The amp outage also has to be the same. Otherwise, this could damage your battery. The voltage is too high and the amperes are too high. Your phone could overheat, causing damage to your battery. And, if and uh, the last bonus piece that I want to add is one of these memory cards, micro SD. Now look, just because you bought a phone does not mean that you just get to go to a vendor and demand to have a to buy a micro SD card. You need to check the website and see what memory cards are compatible with a particular gadget that you just bought, be it a camera a phone, a tablet, whatever. You have to make sure that you get a memory card that is optimized to the max for that particular product that you just bought. And that's pretty much it really. One of the very last gadgets that I wanna talk about, and it's the last one because it happens to be the last thing that I own out of everything that I have mentioned so far, would be a tablet. Now, if you already own a phone and a laptop, I am not sure exactly why you would need one of these. Even I don't know, but I have one anyways. A tablet is just basically a bigger phone. If you own one of these, you probably have a stylus to go with it. All the features that I mentioned that you want to look into when it comes to getting a phone also apply here when it comes to a tablet. If the minimum RAM that you should look into when it comes to a phone is four, when it comes to a tablet because of a bigger screen, I suggest you get six gigs of RAM and higher. Anything else? It's just basically the same as what I mentioned when it comes to a phone. And so one of the companies that you might want to look into would be obviously Samsung at the top. And then you have uh, Lenovo. They also make some really good uh, tablets, which reminds me, I didn't mention Apple when it came to phones. And I'm not again mentioning Apple when it comes to lap uh, tablets. I don't have anything against Apple users. I don't have anything against Apple in particular, but um, yeah, well, the majority of us do cannot afford any one of those products, especially the latest ones, whether or not it's two to three years old, it doesn't matter. They, they are still very, very expensive and you will be limited as far as applications go. So Apple is a company that I am not going to mention. And I did mention throughout the whole video, not because I hate it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's out of reach for the most of us. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to tablet. And that's pretty much the conclusion of the video. That is all that I had to mention as far as my gadgets are concerned. I hope you found the video interesting. I hope you learned something. I hope that um, there is something that you got out of the video that might help you in the next uh, purchase that you are going to make as far as any of these gadgets uh, is concerned. And if that's the case, um, please like the video, share it. If you know somebody that does not know a thing or two about any one of the gadgets that I mentioned, I want you to share it because number one, you do not want to take the time of day to explain it to them. So hopefully this is the video that will help you bring the knowledge to them. And if that person happens to be you and you are watching the video, um, just type in the comment section below. And if you have any questions to ask that I can answer, I will do my best. And uh, other than that, that's it guys. This is not so burned in here. I'm out until the next video. Peace out.